And welcome back. They've been around since before the dinosaurs, horseshoe crabs, yet they're not even crabs. But some experts warn they're being threatened now by both overdevelopment and overfishing, although the fishing community doesn't totally agree. Take a look. Inside this breeding laboratory run by Malloy College in Suffolk County, the next generation of marine biologists is learning about the long history of horseshoe crabs. They've been on this planet for 445 million years. Dr. John Tanacredi warns their ancient lineage is now threatened, though, by overdevelopment and overharvesting. What we found at Malloy College is that um, about an 8% decrease in, over the years in the numbers of sites that have been supporting breeding horseshoe crabs. Dr. Tanacredi and his young research staff say the loss of horseshoe crab habitats would mean much less food for birds who depend on the millions of horseshoe crab eggs deposited each year in Long Island's coastal waters. And there is a unique quality to a horseshoe crab's blood that protects humans from infection during medical procedures. The blood of horseshoe crabs is actually used to detect harmful bacteria in both medicines and medical procedures. It's why these researchers are now happy there'll be more state oversight to ensure they're not overfished, a threat that commercial fishermen say is overblown. I know they're not, they're not overfished. We don't fish them at all. They're just the people who uh, go for eels. That's it. Fisherman Frank Squeo says horseshoe crabs are only used as bait to capture eel, a relatively small industry. A spokeswoman for one fishing group goes even further, telling us this legislation is unnecessary and reflects the environmental lobby's power, while labeling it another attempt to eliminate the commercial fishing industry. But researchers like Dr. Tanacredi say the new state legislation will keep the fishing industry honest while protecting one of the planet's oldest living creatures. And joining us now is Dr. John Tanacredi with Malloy College, overseeing that horseshoe crab lab you just saw in West Sable, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Richard. Thank so explain you. how this state legislation will actually help protect the horseshoe crab. The uh, New York State DEC requires uh, permits for collecting horseshoe crabs, and um, there's a, a limit, uh, about 150,000 crabs are collected each year, and um, the state is concerned, certainly the state's legislation um, is looking at whether or not um, this number is a critical number. Uh, we've looked at uh, something a little bit more than just the numbers. We've been looking at habitat, and we're finding that more and more of the habitat for these animals, which have a tremendous, what is called, site fidelity. They come back to the same places each year to breed. And if we're losing the habitat, uh, the numbers are almost secondary. But and what, how, did you lose, how do we lose the habitat? Well, um, development, um, erosion, there's hosts of things like that. Um, this is not necessarily a pollution problem. Uh, these animals are, are, are fairly resilient. Uh, unless some, some people call them scavengers. They'll take up anything, right? Absolutely, and they have a, a, a longevity. They're, as you mentioned in your early remarks, they have a paleo history dating back An forward, incredible paleo history. Surviving five mass extinction events. And so, but here we're at the cusp of of what many people have described as the sixth extinction, which is basically looking at loss of where these animals breed. Well, you say it's both. Could be overdevelopment, people wanting to live by the shore, and then right. changes that are made to the shore, often to protect us from erosion and storms. Uh, but then there is the potential for fishing industry to be uh, somehow uh, taking them in, even if they're being pulled in accidentally. Do you uh, accept what the fishing industry is saying here, that no, we're not doing that? It's a niche portion. It's certainly the fishing industry has always been under pressure uh, for many years. Uh, but conch and eel, which are the two major uh, fished organisms, uh, which use horseshoe crab as bait, which is the critical issue. That's the issue. Remember, we're not just taking the animals out uh, for their primary purpose, which is their blood, which is a practical application. But the idea that you take 150 animals out, they're lost. They're, no, they're not returned to the environment. They're, they're diced up and used for, for bait conditions. We'll talk about the medical benefit in a second here, but uh, are they edible at all, horseshoe crabs? Uh, are they used as food source anywhere in the it's world? It's a very, very unique and acquired palate. And, uh, I would think. In, a, in Asia, there's only four species of horseshoe crabs on Earth. Uh, three 
the, of the other species, the, the one here in, in North America is uh, Limulus, Polyphemus, but the other three species are on critical, critical conditions. Uh, they, uh, but they're on, the, they're on the menu. They're, so they're, some they're people collected. in Asia are actually fishing them to use yeah. it for food, so yeah. there is a threat. Okay, so now, you know, we talked about their prehistoric, <laughs> incredible how far back they go, even before the dinosaurs, and how well they've survived, but there's also a survival aspect for us, the medical benefit. There's a whole industry that we we really couldn't explain it in the story that has built up through the decades because they realized that their blood is unique and being able to protect us from what harmful bacteria explain Basically, how that works gram negative bacteria is here you see them doing critical it. concern uh, the gram negative bacteria uh, is what causes sepsis if it gets into your respiratory or circulatory system and that can happen what during surgery or when you're receiving medicine or receiving any kind of injectable drug uh, so di diabetics uh, anyone that has uh, needs insulin shots for example all of these are basically a prophylactic aspect. They have to be able to be determining if there's any kind of contamination. I have uh, here you see their blood, which uniquely yep. is blue. Yep. And how is this blood somehow able to protect us from those infections then? It's an instantaneous detection of what is called endotoxin. So um, there's a product from the blood called Limulus amoebocyte lysate, or LAL. It's in every hospital in the United States. Because uh, it reacts with this bacteria correct. that could uh, harm you or you kill you. It indication that there's contamination. Otherwise, we wouldn't know it's there. No, and actually, uh, NASA had used uh, LAL on the space shuttle uh, when they were putting uh, satellites in, in the gold rooms. They used that to detect any kind of uh, bacterial contamination. Well, here you see a whole industry built up on this. Uh, how big of an industry is this? Uh, somewhere, somewhere near uh, $300 million a year. Wow. 600,000 animals of blood each year. Um, you mean they take the crab, they fish the crab for this purpose. Correct. They bleed the crab and then have them And blood. then release them. Wow. And then release them back. So and it then, doesn't harm the crab in the long run? The impact is uh, almost insignificant. However, uh, all of these add to the range of insults to, to this particular To hurt organism. their population. Yeah. So, it, But it's not really a crab, right? Is what Some people said called it a giant spider. Is that true? Right. They're, they're related to uh, their arthropods. They're related to... Uh, the arachnids, so oh. spiders and scorpions, uh, but their ancestry uh, dates back to their their distant cousins, which were the trilobites, which were the predominant invertebrate organism on the planet uh, close to 500 million years ago. Sounds like a Jurassic Park episode. Much connection, to the, certainly to the paleo history. So yeah. what's next now for protecting this uh, species, which we now see has a really important purpose for protecting us? Well, i uh, kind of put it in perspective if I can and sure. give you uh, some information. Between 2009 2015, the total number of medical prescriptions dispensed in the United States was 3.95 billion. In total, globally, the number of surgeries that were done based upon 2004 data alone was 234 million operations. Wow. Each one of these has a, an application. So one of the, the major concerns would be to have a synthetic LAL. If we can come up with a synthetic LAL, it removes the horseshoe crab from this particular... Well, that would certainly instance. go a long way toward protecting them and, yes. and, and not having to see this spectacle of medical professionals bleeding them, which is something I don't think people even realized occurred with our modern technology. Dr. John Tanacredi with Malloy College, working to protect the horseshoe crab, and you see why. Thank you very much. Thank